to the Oglethorpe Outlook, getting ready for the first home games of the Oglethorpe men's season. They'll be in Brookhaven this weekend, Friday late afternoon against Roanoke, and then Lynchburg come into town on Sunday. We'll talk about how these games came together and how the season has started with men's head coach John Aiken. John, thanks for the time today. Glad to be here, Jason. Thank you for having me been an eventful start to the season for you guys a run-of-the-mill scoreless draw and then yeah totally run-of-the-mill 3-3 draw with Emory in the Sonny Carter Invitational just how's the team coming out of those two games um I, I think we're better than we were before going in um learned a few things about ourselves that you know we're a very resilient group and you never really know um, what your team's going to be capable of. You know, there's always the theory, there's always the hype, there's always the potential. But, you know, um, until you put yourself in certain situations, you, you don't really know. And, you know, we found out this group's got a lot of character, um, a lot of senior players that, that I think aid in that character. And, um, and then we're just still ironing out, you know, what we do and trying to get all these new players on the same page as quickly as possible. The Sonny Carter Invitational, you guys are always a, a part of that event over at Emory. It's always a great kickoff to the season. This was a little unique in that you played the hosts on Monday night. And one of the crazier games I've seen in a while, down 3-0 to come all the way back to get a 3-3. Just what was the vibe in that second half as you guys were fighting back into it? Um, uh, you know, the goal before halftime certainly was, you know, we knew we're two goals away. Uh, we always know we're capable of scoring two, three goals a game. Um, some self-inflicted wounds that we tried to overlook quickly and realize that mistakes are going to happen, but we were punished for those in those moments and minimizing those and, and just really what our program's all about, um, you know, heading heading into that that final 45 minutes, the guys were fired up. The guys knew they were capable of it. Um, I felt like we had not only the game tying goal, but the go ahead goals, you know, almost there. And we just didn't quite do it. And, you know, going into the final minute where it just figured it's not going to be one of those days, even though we put, you know, just did enough. Um, but we we pulled it out and, you know, I thought we, you know, did did a great job in that 45 minute period. We had the chance to talk to Daniel Lama after the game, and and I've talked to you about him over the past couple of years. A guy who doesn't get as much attention as he should. He's get he gets that equalizer off of a free kick. Just tell me how important Daniel Lama is to your squad. Oh gosh, uh, I'll come at you know come at it from a few different angles. Um, how important he is to our program because you know at Oglethorpe we've got a, a we our OU two team. And Daniel was a very under-recruited player coming out of high school, North Cobb High School. Um, we had a long-standing group of players, Ben Schick, uh, Josh Labus, who had played for North Cobb. And they're like, hey, coach, there's this kid. Was a second team, you know, ECNL kid, ECNLR kid um, at the time. And, you know, we took a risk on him and brought him in. And, you know, he played a lot of games for our OU2 team. And, um, I'm still kicking myself that we didn't move him up that year, but you know, he got a chance to play a ton of minutes and, uh, the, in the spring, he just really blossomed, uh, knew what we wanted to do. And, you know, has not only become a, you know, a three-year starter now for us, but I mean, a dominant player, I mean, you know, he's, he's really been our best defender for, you know, almost three years in a row now, which is, which is kind of wild. Cause we've got some great defenders. It's so hard to, to predict which players are going to be the ones that break through. As long as you've been in this, you never know when a guy like Daniel is going to pop up and, and become that player for you guys. You have a very diverse squad, and you've got some new faces this year. You've got some guys back. It's been very cool to see them on the field so far. How has the group come together off the field, and, and how have the training sessions gotten them to buy into the way you want them to play? Um. You know, we, we've got some guys who are fifth years who have been four year starters at very good division two programs, division one programs, some elite division three programs. And they still, you know, um, still need to get used to how much we play and how much we ask every player to play. So that's been the biggest message to those guys. And then understanding 
you know, their roles and responsibilities um, and, then, and then trying to fit them into what we do. Um, a few people do it naturally. A few players are getting better every single session. And, um, you know, and then the other with the collective group, um, there, there's an immediate camaraderie with these guys um, that I've rarely seen um, from so many new players. And I think that's um, so many players last year's. I think that has a part of that ingredient, you know, that's part of the ingredient there. Um, but it's just a great group of, you know, human beings and players and, you know, want to enjoy it and give their best effort. Um, and I think, you know, some of our guys that, you know, are, are, you know, great players for us are, you know, have been coming back from injury and we haven't even used them to, you know, their full potential yet. I mean, guys like JR, guys like Ben, um, guys like Jake have, you know, uh, very, very limited training sessions and games and they're just working their way back in. So it's, uh, it's, it's interesting how we're, how we're trying to gel as quickly as possible. Tell me how this event came about this weekend, you guys hosting a Roanoke and Lynchburg and also Emory coming over and getting games with them as well. Yeah, this is, we're very, very excited about the, the opportunity for us to host the inaugural John P. Salomon uh, Invitational. Um, the Salomon Foundation was very um, supportive of our, of our goal of putting together an extremely um, high level tournament. Um, we've been Emory's partner in the Sonny Carter Invitational for my 23 years and probably, you know, before that for, for almost 30 years. Um, and it's a great event, the Sonny Carter, because Emory brings two great teams in and um, we basically get two home games out of it. And they get to tout the fact that you're playing two of the top teams in the South every year. So it's an easy draw. And, you know, Corey and I have a great relationship and he agreed to be our standing partner um in what we've put on so um in the interesting dynamic behind the scenes um john salomon who our tournament's named after was one of our great alums from the 80s um class of 86 um he tragically died in the world trade center attacks in, in 2001 and um but was a team captain for us in the 80s uh, a linchpin in the, in the 80s alumni group and um just a a, a great overall family and um, I didn't get the opportunity to meet John because he passed away the year before I, I took over here. But um, his nephew, his, his brother's son, Thomas, was looking at Oglethorpe and Lynchburg. He was originally from D.C. So I developed a relationship with him. He ended up tragically choosing uh, Lynchburg over Oglethorpe. And, and we got the opportunity to have some great battles over the years there. And um, we've just stayed in touch over the years. And their their family has been great. They put a scholarship in his honor at, at, you know, at Oglethorpe in general. And then now they were supporting this tournament. And so, uh, yeah, I mean, we've got three of the four teams this weekend, Rono, or Lynchburg, Oglethorpe and Emory were all in the NCAA tournament last year. Um, just really, and, and, you know, Roanoke's uh, just beat Catholic, who was in the tournament um, this past weekend. And uh, and they're traditionally a top three team in, in the ODAC, which is a really strong league um, overall. So uh, two teams decided to come in and play two other great teams. And we've got a great foundation supporting the event and, um, you know, in perpetuity. So we're, we're this is an annual second weekend tournament. We'll be able to draw some great teams in. You know, we've got a great guarantee for teams coming in to, to play us. And, um, you know, hopefully a great weekend of competition and, and, and results for the uh, the host institution. It's been cool to to talk to a lot of different coaches in, in preseason, in the beginning of the season this year about scheduling. And Ed Joyce over at Georgia State put together a really challenging schedule for, for his Panthers women's team. You and Emory put together a very challenging schedule because of these two events, bringing in premier opponents in the first two weekends of the season. How important is that for you to get this team where you want them to be in 2024 to have four tough games off the bat? Yeah, and then you know, uh, yeah, I mean, with the WNL WNL next weekend, it'll it'll be you know the top three teams in the ODAC and Emory that we're doing a home and away with. Um, I think you remember it was 2000, 2021, um, we were 0-6 um, at the start of the season and then ran the table in the conference. So, um, and, and I think five of the six teams were nationally ranked. Um, so so I, I don't think it does you any favors to not have a realistic look at yourself. Um, I, I really, I mean, results are very important for the at-large bid, but I'd rather be well-prepared than play for an at-large bid and, and hope things work out in the conference. I'd rather make it work in the conference based on the outside body of work. And 
um, that's what we always build towards uh, e each season. And and I think it's it's served us well. Um, sometimes you take some nicks and bruises and losses and ties, but I, I, I think it's better off to do it that way than, hey, saying you're 5-0 and, and and not really being a 5-0 and team. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree with you there. So two games in, you've got to this weekend, all difficult opponents. What do you want to see progress from games one and two to games three and four? Um, the, the opening tournament had some – interesting nuances. Um, you know, we played Bellhaven fatigued after they had beaten Emory in a knockdown drag out game and Bellhaven was in their conference final. I, I think um, they're better than people give them credit for a very hardworking team. Um, we could have finished that game off early and, and we left them hanging around and it was a scrappy game till the end. And we just couldn't The goalkeeper had a great game. And, and then, you know, Emory played us after we had just played 90 minutes and they had a day off in between. So we were a little leggy early and, and then kind of woke up a little bit late um, after some mental and technical you know, breakdowns. Going into this weekend against maybe as strong, potentially stronger opponents, um, I think we need to tighten up those mistakes that, that – you know, dug ourselves a hole in the Emory game, and we need to be more clinical when we create chances, whether it's in the first 10 minutes of the game or the final 10 minutes of the game. Um, because, you know, if you don't do those things, you know, very good teams will punish you, and we're playing two very good teams this weekend. We'll have the calls on the Oglethorpe Sports Network. I'll be on the call for everything in this event. It's going to be a fun weekend over in Brookhaven. Make sure you come out. And if you can't, you can watch on the stream with me. John, can't wait to see you guys this weekend. Looking forward to it. Yeah, looking forward to it. It should be a great weekend of soccer, and we hope everybody comes out and supports this program. All right, welcome to the Oglethorpe Outlook here on the SDH Network. I'm Madison Cruz, and joined with me is sophomore Evan Thomas. Evan, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. Awesome. All right. Well, I want to talk a little bit about that last matchup against Roanoke. A 1-1 draw. You guys just came off of that huge win against Wesleyan, that 11-0 victory. What did you guys learn from that matchup against Roanoke? Um, I guess I feel like it might have been slowed down just because we had played such an easy team and then going back to playing someone like more our speed. Honestly, I feel like we were just like still riding off the high from that big win from before. And then I guess just, so just like honestly coming back and focusing like we're playing like an even match team now. It's not going to be that like that easy. And we have to be able to play faster. To match and up against up against a team like Roanoke, too, mm -hmm. with the way that they were playing, they were really dominant with the ball. They were really pinning you guys into your de off defensive half. So it was difficult for you guys to really break through. How did you guys finally find the opportunities to really push through and find the moment and get the um, get the goal? Oh, Honestly, at first she realized that they were playing a 4-4-2, so they had an extra person in the midfield. Meanwhile, we only had three in the midfield, so had to realize playing in that midfield wasn't going to help us, so it was to keep playing on the outside, playing out wide where they didn't have so many people, and then being able to cut in behind because we have a lot of good speed and like talented people to get in behind and then get in the goal. I want to ask, too, with where you play and also to bringing in the players like uh, Jade Anderson and Ella Price, mm -hmm. you guys are all in the same class and you guys know each other pretty well. How does that connection help on the field as well as like off of it? How does that help you guys? I feel like you're, there's supposed to be a lot of talking going on during the game. And so I feel like sometimes you're so focused and you're not talking. But when you're like so connected with some people, it's like you don't even need to talk. You just they just know your movements and know what you're going to do. So it's just easier to play like off of each other like that. I do want to ask, I want to go back to that Wesleyan game because you got your, your first goal. First goal with Oglethorpe, you got that goal. What was that like for you getting that first goal? Honestly, it was, since it was also just so late in the game, it wasn't like we were doing any more like big celebrations for the goal. I was honestly more shocked because I couldn't believe like, it just like kind of like a ball and it's just like, I kind of like kicked my leg out like ninja style and it went in. So I was just like, oh, okay, like that happened. But like we didn't want to make a big deal about it. So I didn't talk about it until like after. <laughs> but it was more so just really surprising. I love that. I love that. Um, I, I talked to Ella a little bit um, before I had the chance to talk to you. But she talked a lot about the team chemistry that you guys all have with each other, mm -hmm. whether it's on the field, how that helps there, but also off the field. What has it been like to really get to know um, everyone here with a lot of the newcomers that have come in as well as a lot of the returners? 
It's been really good. I and I said this before when I first joined last year. I was like, I've never been on a soccer team before where I've gotten along with the whole team and everyone gets along together. Like ever in my life, there's always like little small groups or cliques inside of the team. And I was like, it's not like that. Like everyone gets along together. We could all go out somewhere and everyone hang out and everyone be involved. Like no one's left out. And is that something that Rob King has really emphasized with you guys um, and what he's been able to do in his um, short tenure with Oglethorpe? I think it helps like mixing. And I think like that's the one thing that like, our preseason stuff, like he really mixes up the teams based off. Like it's not just all the seniors together or all the freshmen together. Like it's a, a big mixture. People say you're always, you're always talking to someone else that you probably weren't looking to talk to before as much. So I feel like that helps to like kind of grow closer, especially since we're just, to get, we're not, it's not like we're together in that small group for so long, but long enough to like connect a lot. Yeah, I remember we, me and Jason Longshore had the opportunity to catch up with him before the season even started for you guys. Um, and he mentioned you guys did a little cabin trip. Yes. As well, how did, how did that come together and being a part of that, how did that really help you guys really form a close relationship? So last year was my first time doing it and I thought it was really fun. I, and then this year I was like, I kind of knew what to expect a little bit. Um, but it's honestly, it's really fun. And it really does help you connect being in that small cabin and then having to like complete whatever task it is together. Like you have to work together and everyone wants to win because we're all competitive. So like, it's like, you have to work with those people. And then you all like, you end up finding out things you probably would have never found out if that hadn't happened. So I really enjoyed it. I feel like it, it creates more of that uh, competitive energy, especially when you have groups of people. You guys are all in different groups. So it just, you know, it heightens it. It's great. It's great little. It's a great little competitive rivalry. Then you just get like a leg up of like, hey, remember when I beat you during the cabin trip? <laughs> I love it. I love it. But um, looking back, I want to look forward. Um, you guys have your next matchup against Piedmont University this Friday. Mm-hmm. Oh, I lost all of my dates for a second. <laughs> anyway. But you have it up against Friday. What has it been like leading up to that matchup after what you guys did against Roanoke? Honestly, focusing on what we, 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 we were breaking down in the Roanoke game. And so, like, our midfield. And then knowing that it's how to get up and knowing, like, when to get up and push up and how to get up, like, all the way and playing out the back. Because, I mean, Roanoke was smart enough to know they had an extra person in the middle. So they were purposefully cutting off our outside back pass, which is what we were used to doing. So it was like not being able to do that pass in like middle of the game, not knowing how to change it. So, but you also don't play many teams that play that formation, but also just like to be able to be prepared for anything that happens. So it's mostly just being able to be prepared, playing different teams in different position wise. I was really in- um, intrigued as well. Um, I had called the match um, for you guys in the Roanoke match. And one thing that was interesting, you, Ella Price, Jade Anderson, when y'all came on, it was almost like, I don't want to say a super sub because in college it's like you guys interchange as you guys come out. But when you guys came in, it's almost, it was like a burst of energy. How do you kind of, what's the message to you guys coming into a match where you guys are me- meant to make a difference? You guys are coming in and you're, it's I'm not expected, but you're coming in to try and get something going. I feel like honestly, it helps a little bit being able to like see how everyone is playing, like being, inside, being able to see how everyone's playing and see where it's going wrong. And then you're watching who's in your position and what they're doing wrong and like what you would do to correct it. So by the time, like you go in, you've seen where we were like where the problem was and why we were breaking down. So now it's like up to me. I can't go in and do the exact same thing I just saw them doing and was like saying about it. I'm like, I have to go in and fix that. And that's honestly what it was. So like we weren't getting up or like playing out back, like we couldn't get the ball up. So it's really just like finding those little things. I know it's hard to see during the game because there's just so much going on. So me going in knowing that okay, this are the spots that we can like have an advantage. I feel like, too, the lightning delay didn't help either. You know, you got a rhythm and then... It was really bad. And it was, like, (laughs) it's the fact that it was at the very end of the halftime, so we thought we were about to go on. And then we got back out. It was, like, raining. I was, like, so are we going to get delayed again or... No, we were up there, too, and we were, like, oh, gosh, are we going to get delayed another time? But I'm glad it was just rain. We were able to finish out the game, and it was was a fun one as well um, against Roanoke. But looking forward to the matchup against Piedmont on Friday. It's going to be a ton of fun. Um, But yeah, thank you so much, Evan. I appreciate you taking the time. Thank you. Welcome back to the Oglethorpe Outlook here on the SDH Network. I'm Madison Cruz and joined with me now is Ella Price. Ella, how are you doing today? Good. How are you? Doing well. So I got to talk about that last matchup against um, Roanoke. You know, you tied it. They came back. You guys were down 1-0 for a while. 
You end up getting the PK from Mackenzie Jones. What was the message from Rob King going into halftime and kind of getting you guys ready to go up in that matchup? Um, he just wanted us to keep fighting and playing as a team and not to give up, like keep going for each other and keep fighting for one another. So, Rob King has really emphasized how important it is to like make sure you all bond and you guys are mm -hmm. all connected. He mentioned that you guys do a little cabin trip um, mm -hmm. for that. What was that experience like getting to know a lot of the girls kind of outside from being on the field? Um, it's it's pretty much fun. We all split up in different groups um, of different uh, grade levels, and it's a great experience for everyone. It's fun, it's competitive, and it's good to get to know each other and everything. So it's a, it's a good thing. Coming in, it's your sophomore season after coming out of having a great freshman season for you. What 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 are your goals and aspirations coming into this new season, especially after a huge success that you had in your freshman year? Um, I think I want us to win more games, get higher in the conference as a team. I think we have a stronger team this year, and I think we can really build from that. Now, I will say, you got to walk me through, you know, you were named um, SAA Newcomer of the Year. It was the first ever in program history. What did it mean to you to get that award and to be able to represent Oglethorpe University like that? Um, it was exciting. I was surprised, but I think knowing I have teammates that are really supportive and they push me to be the better version of myself, especially my coaches and Coach M. So I think it wasn't me as an individual. It was more as a team that allowed me to push to be a better person. And you have such a great backbone, I think, with veterans and with some newcomers that have come in as well. Arlo Krieger, Mackenzie Jones are just a few that really stick out as being those leaders on the team. What is it like to have them be that leader for you guys and being able to look up to them and learn from them a little bit? Um, they're, ever since I stepped in, they were good leaders, no matter um, what grade level they were in. They always pushed you, even in practice, it wasn't just practice. We wanted to play like it was a game. So they, they've been really helpful. One thing I want to ask is, what would you say, what is it like the relationship that you guys have on and off the field? Um, more or less off the field too, because I feel like it's so important to build that that team culture with you guys, especially with what you guys are trying to do up at Oglethorpe. Yeah, everyone on the team is very sweet, very nice. I, I've never been on a team like this so off the field we're very close on the field we're very close it's it's a good dynamic yeah is there anyone that is would you consider anyone like you're really close to someone that you bonded with immediately as soon as you got there uh yeah there's uh delaney hanks uh she's from florida and she was like my twin we call each other twins because on and off the field we're like twins i love playing with her i love being with her off the field that's awesome. I love it. I love it. You guys have like a, you guys are like, um, yeah, you little twins. I love it. Yeah. I love it. And I mean, I, I think it's just, it's so fun getting to hear just like what you guys did as well. Rob King mentioned, listen, he said it was Hogwarts houses. So which, yeah. which, uh, what, which one were you, which one were you guys in? Um, the name, maybe I shouldn't say, so I won't say it, but there was, there was a group called the Six Paxes and we have this thing called teamalism, you know, like nationalism. Jade mentioned this, like she's the one who created it. But instead of nationalism, we have teamalism. And yeah, they, they won it, but it, it's fun. It's fun. Always so fun. I want to talk a little bit as well, heading into that next matchup against Piedmont University. Um, coming up pretty soon, coming up this Friday. Um, what were some of the things you guys took away from the Roanoke match you guys are going to put towards that game? Um, I think we're focused on building more of the back out of the back and trying to push out as a team so we're able to be in the final third. So like each practices, we've been um, being more of a team player, trying to get quicker touches and able to fin finish all of our shots. So. Has that been a big focus this week heading into that matchup? Because from what I noticed from calling the game, it was very much y'all were very solid defensively. 
it was just trying to push forward. You would have moments going up into the final third. It was just kind of connecting it right at the back. So mm -hmm. has that been a big focus this week? Yes, connecting it out of the back in order to have, in order to go to the final third, yes. What has it been like to have such like a young roster come up? I, I bring up um, Evan Thomas and Jade Anderson as well. What is it like to have all three of you guys out there? Um, fun. Evan's so fun, very extroverted. Jade's fun. It's fun. Um, the age group is like we had um, Abby. She was just 17 when she came in, but she we would bully her and say that she's a minor, but everyone, it's fun. It's so much fun. I love it. All right. Well, Ella, thank you so much for taking the time and good luck this Friday up against Piedmont. Thank you.